Hi and welcome to this Hetzner tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can deploy Ubuntu on your Hetzner cloud. We are going to deploy a VPS server with Ubuntu. Under cloud, that's where you'll find VPSs. Uh, under dedicated, these are dedicated servers. Just click on it and you can see the type of the server that you can deploy. And then you also have other services here. You can use the DNS, DNS management software. You can also register domains. If you want to look at the prices, just click there and you'll see the prices for VPS. You need to create an account, so you can just come here under login. You can just come in here under login and click on cloud. If you want to create your account, if you don't have an account already, just click here on register now. And this is a very straightforward process. You're going to enter all these details and confirm your email and then You'll continue adding more details like your personal information, address, and so on. And then once you're done with that, you'll depending on where you are, you'll need to verify your identity. You can do that once you register your account. And all you have to do is you'll need to use some government-issued ID or a passport, any kind of identification system that is used in your country. You'll just need to take an image of that and then upload it. And the system may automatically identify you or someone will have to do it in a very short span of time so you can just go ahead and sign up if you don't have an account i already have an account so i'm just going to log into my account and then i'm going to show you how you can deploy an ubuntu server so once you log into your cloud hetzner cloud console you're going to see that uh, you don't have a project if it's a new if it's a new account so a project is where all your servers will be Okay, so you can create a new project and group all your servers based on the projects you're working on or based on the systems that you want to deploy. So I'm just going to create a sample project. And then I will add the project and then under this project, I can deploy a new server. I'm just going to click there on create server. Now feel free to look at all of this. You can see the servers you want to create. You can even create load balancers, IPs, and so on. All that will be there. And I'm going to choose a location. Let me just choose Falk, Falkenstein, and that's in Germany. So I'm going to choose that as my data center location. And you can choose a location which is closest to you or closest to your visitors. So depending on where you are, just choose the closest area to where your visitors are. And of course, for an image, you need to choose uh, you need to choose an operating system so you can choose an app if you want to install any of these applications you can do so but in my case of course i want to install an ubuntu server and depending on the operating system that you choose here you can also change the version that's it for that and then now you need to choose the prices now if you do want dedicated vpss you can Choose that there and the prices will be different. But these are just VPSs that are dedicated. Uh, they will not have many tenants on the same server. There will be few tenants on that server. So if you want something that is faster and won't have lags and so on, then you can try that. But of course, I just want a standard. And in your case, you should choose that. If you just want to host a website, just choose the standard option. And then I'm going to choose this, which is... 3.99 a month two vip two cpus and two gigabytes of ram so you can choose whichever one you want one that will work well with whatever system you want to run you can choose that from there and then volume you can add a volume if you need to add more space just click there for more details you need to add more space on your server you can do that you can click there and you can choose a volume that you want to add. Maybe you want to add 20 GB. That's going to cost you that per month. Okay. You can add additional space on your VPS if you want to. So I'm going to cancel. And networks, if you want to enable VP VPC, that is virtual private networks, on the same uh, in the same data center, you can do that. Maybe you want to create multiple VPSs. You want them to be to be on a private network. You can create a network here. So that's something that you can do there. I'll just cancel. And then firewalls. 
you can set up your firewalls or you can just use the inbuilt firewall in your you can use the inbuilt firewall in your operating system once you install your operating system which is ubuntu you can set up the firewall rules in your operating system so i'm going to just forget about this but you can set that as well if you come if you come there you'll find that and you can add the rules that you want to add so we've chosen ubuntu network we've ignored that firewalls we've ignored that one as well additional features user data in it if you do have some configuration files that you want to run as soon as as soon as your vps is being set up you can do that there during the setup for your vps you can add the configuration files the configuration there if you want to enable backups you can enable backups just click there backups are 20 percent of the server price so if you do choose a different server the price the monthly price for the server will increase by 20 percent all right so these are the important ones user data or backups and then ssh if you want to add ssh you can click there to add ssh if you generate ssh keys you can add the public key here so if you want to set up ssh keys i do have a tutorial for this a very intense tutorial once you deploy your ubuntu server just come here i will add this link in the description and you can set up your server it says debian 10 but it's going to work with ubuntu as well so you can check that you can just come in here and follow along with this set up your server so that you can install whatever you want to install after setting it up you can also watch this video to see how to set up the server so you can give the server a name you can give the server a name and you can call it whatever that is just a sample you can just put something like that and that's pretty much it just go back to see if everything is as you want it all right once you do that you can also deploy multiple servers maybe you're setting up uh, kubernetes clusters then in that case you can install multiple servers and when you install the servers make sure you give them different names as well i'm going to deploy one server i will create and buy now and the good thing with hetzna is that the servers are built hourly if i destroy the server after 24 hours i will only be billed for i will only get billed for the 24 hours that have used the server not for the full month like most other vpss so just give it time to deploy and then we're going to see how we can log into the server via ssh all right so my server has been created if i go to my email i'm sure i'm going to get details for this server let me just click on it to see what details i have here so backups i can enable that for my server i don't want to do that of course and you get all these other settings for this so let's say that uh, you wanted to install windows and uh, uh, you saw that there was no way to install windows there if you want to install windows you can come here under iso images and you'll be able to install windows and just remember that when you're installing windows you 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 still need to install uh, that driver package i've forgotten the name but there's a driver package that you need to install with your windows if you want windows to install successfully you'll need to mount that as well when you're installing during the installation process but just forget about that if you don't want to use windows ubuntu is already installed on your server so you can look at all this to see what options you have so let's see how we can log into the server we do have our ip and all the other details should have been sent to my email now you can use the console here to log in to your server you can use the console here to log into your server but maybe you don't like to use the console so if you're on windows just go to google and search for git and then install git and it will come with git bash once you install git just open up git bash and you can log into your server so i can do ssh user usually by default you get root but let me just go to my email and confirm these details so if you go to your email you'll get the login details for your server okay so 
look at your email as soon as the server is set up they will email you the user and the password and the ip so for me the ip is that i'm just going to choose that and by default the user is root at the ip address so he just wants to confirm that this server is authentic i will click yes to add this to my hosts file on my local computer so i'm just going to press i'm just going to type yes and then enter and that will add it to my local hosts file and then i can i can log in with the password that was sent to me i can paste and when you paste the password or when you type it in you won't see it so just press enter and there we go i've logged in and the first thing that i'm being asked to do is to change my password so i can change my password let me first of all enter the current password enter and then the new password retype it there we go my password has been changed i'll just clear the screen and the first thing that you need to do as soon as you get your new vps is to update the vps so i'm just going to do sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade And that should upgrade all my packages and once that is done the next thing for you is to set up your server the initial server setup is very important if you want to run a website so just go to this link in the description and follow the steps you'll create a new user so that you don't have to use root and then you can set up ssh authentication so that you can log in using the keys and then once you do that you will disable ssh you'll disable the root user from logging in and you'll also disable password authentication so that people can only log in using the keys that you set up and if you don't want to install kubernetes or anything that has a problem with swap file swap files you can add a swap location for your server so that you can increase the memory the artificial memory that you have on your server so that's pretty much it for this tutorial just a recap you've seen how you can deploy an ubuntu server and then You've seen how you can log in. You've seen how you can log in to that server. That's it for this video. If you do have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments section.